Hello guys, it is Eric here again. Um, I'm trying to make a video real quick, um, right before I gotta go study again. But I'm gonna be going over um, basis on how to install the development um, environment. I'm running a virtual machine right now, just so you can see all the installation of a couple tools I'm gonna be using. Um, and then I'll go to my normal PC where everything's actually installed to show you how it all works. Um, first, going to get a MySQL database running. Um, if you already have one, great. If you don't, I'm going to be using WAMP. Um, I'll leave a link in the video description. Simplest way, yeah, open up all the x64 links. Some won't work, and but that's okay. So we're going to just open up all of them. And we're going to open up 664. Here we go, 18404 defined by me. Download. Click download. Um, okay. And we're going to wait for WAM to download, but I'm going to install these. Cool. Accept. Install. Same with this one, I agree, install, yes, perfect. I'm going to come back uh, once WAMP is finished downloading. Alrighty, WAMP is finished downloading, so I'm going to open it, say yes, English is fine, accept the license agreement I didn't read. Uh, this is just telling you to install the things we've already installed. Next, we want custom installation with MySQL. So next, next, install. Now this might take just a minute. Come on, it's it's getting there. Yes, I would like to choose a different browser. Chrome. Yes, I would like to choose a different text editor. No, I want Notepad++. Now it's just going to finish up installing everything. Next, finish. So now that we have WAMP installed, um, I'm going to just delete all those. Uh, we are going to run WAMP. And we should see we get a little red icon in the bottom. And eventually it will turn green once everything is started, but it might take a bit the first time. Oh, it's orange. And come on, turn green. There we go. Okay, now that WAMP is running, um, we're going to go download Node.js. I'll leave a link in the video description or just search up Node.js. Click the big green button for the recommended for most users. That'll be fine.
And it's taking a while. Come on, internet. You can do it. Okay, we're gonna open up node. Say next. I accept your license agreement that I did not read. Next, next. Uh, we don't need that. Next, install. Wait for it to install everything. Okay, now we're going to do a couple more things, and then I'm going to switch over to my uh, other PC. Well, not my virtual PC, you know what I mean. Um, so, we're going to download a couple things, I'll put the link in the description again, as always. Going to download this file, and download this. So, just say raw, save as, database.sql. And then we're going to just say download from under the releases branch. Okay, once we got those two done, um, we are going to go, oh, come on back here. We're going to go to here, going to say PHP my admin. Going to say the username is root. This is my SQL, there's no password. And now I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to call it client name. Pretty much call it whatever. No one will really see it. So call it what you want. You just need to remember what you called it. Say import. Choose file. And then this file. Um, and then we say go. Should see it. Did a lot of things. Perfect, now you see we have all these in here. Cosmetics, HWID ban, HWID whitelist, user map, and then users. Perfect. Now that we got that, we're, it's going, let's extract this. I'll use 7-zip, you can use whatever zip archiver you want. Doesn't really matter. Put it on my desktop, or wherever the heck you want it. Um, then what we want to do is open up a command prompt cd into this directory and we're going to say npm install this is going to install all the packages needed for the server um, now i'll also be going over at some point in time how to host this in a non-development environment so if you're hosting some production either paid hosting or free hosting um yeah, those work all right now that we have this done it's great um I will now switch over to my actual other computer and show you all the configuration stuff and how that all works. Alrighty, I'm back. Um, it's been a little bit of time since my last cut, but I'm going to try to get right back into it. So now that we have everything set up, um, now I'm going to kind of go over the configuration and how that all works. So if we open this up, and we go to config. Um, now we're going to go to database. Dot config. Open that. So should see in here. Um, you put the IP address of your host, um, your password, user, and then your database name. I named it client name, but it's whatever your PHP my admin um, database is named. And then in config. I'll just open this up real quick. Um, there's nothing too, too much in here. I'll go over what these client settings do in a second. These are like global settings that when every client starts up, it asks the server, hey, give me the global settings. Um, so like latest version number, you know, is the client on whitelist. Um, that kind of stuff. You can add anything you want here. Uh, and it will automatically add it to the global settings page. And I'll show that. Um, this client secret you want to just change to a ton of random numbers and letters. Um, this is just used for hashing. Um, you 
yeah. You want to you wanna change this uh, when you're going to production. You can leave this as it is for development stuff, that's fine. Um, but when you release it, you want to just generate a nice long random string of letters. Um, and then here's the port for your server um, that it will start up on. I'm just putting it on 8080 because uh, it's convenient for me. So those are kind of the two configs. Um, and I will now launch the server and we'll um, kind of view it in the browser and everything. So we're going to run the command npm um, run and then dev for development. Um, so this is just going to start our development server and you'll see it says running Eric's client communication server, the magic happens on port 8080. So if we now go to port 8080 and I will bring down a web browser and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like this kind of a split view so we can see. So if we go to localhost colon 8080, should see a home sweet home page. I didn't know what else to put here. You can make this redirect to whatever, uh, but you can enjoy some ASCII art <laughs> if you really wish you see. Uh, we made a request. No, we got a 304 back. That's fine. That's just because nothing has changed on this page. It's a static page. Um, if we go to slash API, should see we get a 200 OK text. Perfect. Um, that's mainly is going to be used to just check if our API is running or not. Um, yeah. And then we have a couple more. So if, let me actually pull up. Let me go to here. And we can go to app routes API. We can see all of the routes in here. So let's go to slash cosmetics. Um, and I can put this full screen there. Slash um, cosmetics. So now you see exactly what's in the database. So here, let me let me split screen this. I'm gonna try to show this as best I can. Um, let me log in. And we are going to Expand that out. Man, this does not resize well. Client name. And we can now see that there is, so if we go to cosmetics, we can now see uh, the UID. It's printing out just in JSON pretty much. So cape style, null, um, you know, how to enable. And I can beautify this at some point, but it kind of just prints out everything that's in the database. And then in the client, will then interpret that into Java. At some point, um, we can make a request to is banned, um, and we're going to let me. Um, this is not really useful. Um, let's go to HBID ban, and we can see that the, the fake HWID I have, which is HWID banned, uh, is banned once. So we could say is banned. We just make a request to that, or HWID. We never defined an HWID. So we can say hwid equals, uh, I don't know, fake hwid. We're not in the database, we're not banned. Um, but if we do um, hwid banned, we'll see we are banned. Um, and all these requests are, and how they all work, I'm working on documenting um, under API. So if I go to here, ooh, that's Discord. That's not what I want. We go to here, we should be able to see is ban cosmetics, um, get username. Oh, I forgot to, okay, I'll make a mental note to myself to add global into here. Um, so we can do cosmetics, we can uh, map UUID, is basically just a map from HWID to UUID to username, so we can query getting the person's username. Um, so I'll give an example of that. Um, if we go to here and we say here, or user map, um, so we can see that their UID is this. So if we make a request to localhost colon 8080 slash API slash get username. We can now see that their username is fake user. Uh, the only reason I have this set up is my plan 
is in the future to make a whole nice uh, like admin panel where you don't have to like edit a database and I want it to display their username instead of a UUID. And Mojang has a rate limit of one request per minute to convert a username or to convert a, a UUID to username. So I implemented my own where the client just reports back the UUID and username that's it log that it logs into. Um, then there's also slash global settings, which just prints out those global settings that I showed um, in here. And so what I could do is say comma, uh, I don't know, loves homework on false. And if we go back to here, we should see that since the development server, it restarted due to changes. Um, and we can go to here and say refresh. Loves homework is false. We don't, I don't like homework. So, I mean, some classes, homework's fine. Computer science homework's pretty fun. But sorry, beyond, beyond my point, uh, you can add anything here that you want all clients to get at. Um, then there is also a super work in progress um, admin panel. So you can go to login. Um, the username is test account and the password is password. So you can log in and it just prints out your hashed password. Um, I need to make a better admin page, but you know, that is fine. This works to showcase how it works. And then you can also say slash sign up and we can make a new account. Ooh, blah. Password is ice cream. Say so sign up. Now we're logged in as Hoobla. It hashed our password. And then we should see that if we go to the users, oh man, uh, I can see Fubla is now there with our hashed password. Um, I'll turn this into an actual admin panel at some point, but right now it is just super crude. Um, most of it is like still pretty work in progress, so I'll be, I'll be making updates to this as time goes on. I just currently don't have time and, you know, I want to get a video out for you guys. So that's the super basics on how this all works. Uh, I will work on documenting it more, but if you have any questions, um, either leave them in the comments or um, Discord's a better way of getting a hold of me usually than YouTube comments. Since for some reason, like YouTube comments seem really delayed when I get them, I'm not really sure, but I've gotten like a YouTube comment that was made like a month ago and I just got a notification for it recently. I'm like, well, thanks YouTube. That, that helps with me responding in a timely fashion. Um, but yeah, just send me a message on Discord. And I'll be happy to attempt to help with Node.js, but I'm still much of a noob at it. So if you guys, if if any like pro Node.js and Express people out there watch this video and you find some like glaring flaws, um, that would be great if you could make a pull request or um, or do a do an issue and how to fix it. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I will. I don't know when the next video is coming out. I'm really stressed for time right now. But yeah. See you in the next one at some point in time.